Hi, Roger. It's Chris from Fangoria. How are you? Hello, Chris. How are you? I'm, I'm really good. I was just talking to your lovely wife about this very exciting initiative on YouTube, and I just wanted to ask you a couple more questions to putty in the cracks. All right. Let me put you on a uh, speaker, because I'm sitting here at the moment with my ace assistant, Maria Harris, right. who's uh, running a big part of Corman's Drive-In. Hold a on excellent. just a minute. Thank you. Are you still there? I'm here. I'm here. Hello, Maria. Hi, Chris. How are you? Very good. Um, yeah, Roger, so I was just talking to Julie, I'm just looking over these, uh, the, the initial 30 pictures here, and uh, she mentions that you're hands-on on this, you get your fingers in all the pies, and that you're programming, and I wanted to know, is there a method to your madness? Well, it's more madness than method, <laughs> as usual. Right. There's a certain, there's a certain method. Uh, Corman's Drive-In will release in the first year somewhere in the neighborhood of 400 films. Right. What is the uh, what is the launch date, Maria? Um, June thirteenth. Our launch date is June thirteenth, and we plan to go this way: thirty pictures a month. We probably won't go through the whole four hundred the first year. Be thirty pictures a month, re replenished each month. At the end of each month, we'll probably keep a few of the first 30 on, probably the best selling mm. of them, and then bring in others. For instance, if we keep 10 uh, for the second month, we'll bring in 20 new ones for the second month, and so forth thereafter. Uh, it's been something of, of a challenge as to what to do, because we, needless to say, want to lead with our best pictures in order to launch it well, but we don't want to exhaust all our best pictures in the first month and have nothing but secondary pictures. So we've sort of put together uh, a combination of some of our best pictures and some of our... We believe all our pictures are good, but of course every mother believes every baby is beautiful. Of course, of so, course. Uh, Maybe some of the ones we think are good aren't so good, but we put together a cross-section, and I think about two-thirds of them are going to be PG, and uh, about one-third of them will be R. We, we made, as you know, a number of R-rated films, uh, uh, starting with The Big Doll House, our women in prison picture in the Philippines when we first got started, and then uh, Cat Shea did uh, Strip to Kill, which was a murder mystery in a strip club, which led to a number of murder mysteries in strip clubs. But we go back over and over and over to science fiction and horror, which is the basis of the library. Although we have a number of family films as well, which have held up well over the years. Now, just as a side note, before we continue, I, I just realized that Eddie Romero passed. Were you aware of that? Ed, I didn't know that. Eddie was a good guy. He directed a couple of the Philippine pictures for us in uh, when we first started, and he was known as something of an auteur in the Philippines. He did commercial films for us, but he did what uh, they would consider to be auteur films. I'm, I'm sorry to see uh, here that here that he died. Yeah, but a good long life and definitely one full of action. Um, but I, you know about these about these titles. You're talking about you dividing them between R-rated and PG and G. Now we're we're talking about YouTube. We're talking about online, the Wild West. Do ratings even matter? And how do you how do you control that? Well, I don't know if there will be ratings as such. What it amounts to, it's VOD. It's is it three ninety five or three ninety nine? It's three dollars and ninety nine cents a month to subscribe, and you get. Uh, all 30 pictures or one or none for 3.99 so ratings is not going ratings are not going to be of any particular meaning to us what will be uh 3.99 times x and x is the number of subscribers that will be meaningful to us of course so just viewer discretion advised when when applicable um yes, Chris, this is julie i just came in to yeah. uh tell Maria that you had kindly offered to do anything to help promote Corman's World. Of course. Here with Roger, so, um, you know, you're on to Maria, right? Yes, 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 Maria and I are in contact, so we can we can continue that discussion elsewhere or here, wherever. Um, so, listen, Roger, you are a savvy, a savvy individual here, and uh, always aware of the environment and the playground you're playing in. Are you, part of the programming, are you paying attention to what's happening maybe commercially around you and trying to find certain titles and programming to 
piggyback on those trends? We are. Uh, the situation, as you knew, no, I'm not giving you any new news. Uh, the situation for medium budget and low budget films, which is we we primarily are, uh, is not good at the moment. Uh, the theatrical distribution of medium budget films has slowed to uh, a slow to a crawl. Every now and then, a uh, low budget or medium budget film will get a theatrical distribution, but they're the exception. We've depended primarily on cable TV and DVDs. The, the DVD market is slipping. It's not slipping as much as some people think. It's not falling off a cliff, but say it's rolling down a shallow hill. So there's still <laughs> money in it. We've been selling some of our films on Amazon and eBay uh, without any major uh, uh, advertising push for that. And we have a general idea as which ones have been selling the best. And I think this idea, which is sponsored by Google, Google through Hulu, is uh, a major opportunity for us to get in on VOD, which is finally taking off. I've been predicting, as you may know for years, that this is going to be the future, uh, but it's always the future is around the corner. I think we're starting to get around the corner now, and I'm putting a lot of effort and a lot of faith uh, in uh, uh, the, uh, the Corman's Drive-In channel. You know, I was talking to Julie about the questioning about um, new content and, and web webisodes or, or something to keep the viewers coming back with, with something new. And uh, the idea came up that you and Julie should have your own cheap-to-produce reality show. What do you think about that? It never occurred to me, but it's a really good idea. I don't know. Uh, Maria is writing all these notes down. I think that's good. I don't know exactly how to do it, but that, that hasn't been mentioned. And you're correct in saying we've got to have some original programming. We're going, we're going to do a number of things. We're having uh, inter live interviews with many of the people who've worked with us over the years, right. particularly to introduce films they've worked on. So there'll be a lot of live comment from uh, actors, directors, writers, cameramen, stuntmen, uh, editors, and so forth, uh, people who've worked with us. That will be live. We're thinking of having a news uh, program that would be on uh, for a few minutes every day, just saying what's going on in Hollywood today uh, with particular emphasis on uh, the genres we've worked with, primarily science fiction and horror, but everything else. We're thinking of having an in-house critic who may... Uh, uh, on Fridays, uh, give his reviews, which will be slightly irreverent, <laughs> on the pictures that open uh, that Friday. We're doing a number of things, and the reality show is actually a good idea. I, I don't know yet how to do it, but uh, it is a good idea. Let me just say that. We may, we may grab that. It's, well, it's all yours. Gift wrap, sir. Uh, Julie was saying that the, uh, Sharktopus is making a comeback here, so that would be a good place to start. Right. We start shooting in the Dominican Republic, I think it's uh, June 24th. Sharktopus versus Terracuda. <laughs> uh, never get tired of them, Roger. Just keep pumping them out. They're fantastic. <laughs>